Hey guys, it's Kelly. Hey, I got page number 11 done in my art journal book, and I love it. Hope you guys do too. It was kind of fun. I tried a couple new things, so I want to share it with you. So there's my book. I tried to talk through it so you'll see me waving my hands a few times, but a voiceover was necessary. But I got this down to 14 minutes, and I'm playing with regular um, distress inks. I've got Mermaid Lagoon, Wild Honey, I wind up using Spice Marmalade as well, um, and a few other colors, and we'll get to those, but I'm just putting down my uh, shelf liner, because it stops the um, ink pads from making that weird sound when it wiggles across the glass, and then that little one is um, Mermaid Lagoon, and I haven't used that yet, so I finally get to play with that, I love that color, it's so, so pretty. But what I'm doing with this page is I'm slapping down the ink. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's all a background. I, you can see the sponge circle. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then there's some black paint on the page. Well, I'm going to cover it with some black and white tissue, so it'll just become part of the whole project. So this is the fun part of you just slap it down, and you don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I hate perfect anyway. Perfect is boring. I love all the imperfections. So I wind up putting that color down. I'll, I'll need a little bit more. I brought out tumbled glass, but I wound up not using it because I fell in love with the uh, Mermaid Lagoon. Really, really pretty blue. Love it, love it, love it. And then Wild Honey, it actually turns out being kind of brownish, yellowish, orangish. And um, it's not orange enough for what I was looking for. I love the combination of blues and oranges. And... Um, Although it's really pretty, it just it didn't have enough orange. It had a little bit too much yellow-brown tone for me. But it was really pretty, and when you mix it with the Mermaid Lagoon, you get this super cool, almost fluorescent green. And it's super cool with just the Wild Honey and the Mermaid Lagoon. But once I add the um, Spice Marmalade, it's the coolest, coolest fluorescent type green. I absolutely love it. I'm going to have to use this combination more often and do some flowers and some butterflies with it because it's a really pretty like bright vibrant color and that green is unique you can't see it so well right now but once I put the spice marmalade down you'll you'll see what I'm talking about so I wanted to put a little bit more blue because a lot of these colors they needed to be nice and bright because once I put the tissue paper down it's gonna be a little muted but the cool thing about this one is I finally finally it's not new but it is new to me um, I finally got some uh, Distress Resist spray, and um, I played with it, and I'm absolutely in love with it. It was so easy to put the tissue paper down. Um, you just spray it and slap it down, and you're good. And then it was important that I sprayed it because I'm working with Distress Ink. As soon as it gets wet, it will run, it will smear, it will move. So I just wanted to spray and put the tissue down. I didn't want my background color to be moving around. So, and that's the tissue paper, the Tim Holtz tissue paper is left over from the previous page. I'm in love with that tissue paper. And I've got another video where I show you how to make your own tissue paper. I, I love the way he does his, but, um, you know, it can be expensive to buy all this stuff, so you can make your own. You can buy that big old pack of white tissue paper and use all your stamps and make your own custom tissue paper. It's pretty cool. For those that don't know. So that's where I'm putting down the Spice Marmalade because it's got that pretty orange tone. And when I go over the Mermaid Lagoon, it that beautiful, almost fluorescent green pops out at you. I absolutely love it. An unexpected magical thing, which I thought was super, super cool. So it looks cool that, and then when I get it wet, it gets even better. It's like, oh my gosh, I love that green. I'm not a green, a fan of green. I that working with green is an actual challenge you have to set for myself so but when I saw that I was like I could work with that green all day long so and there I there I got just plain water and I put some watermarks on there I love that it's a really really cool texture and yeah a lot of it gets gets hidden in the background but um, it still adds the interest underneath the tissue paper and you'll see it later and I'm just drying it with my heat tool. And the green even gets more green. Those colors just come alive. I love it. 
I'm such a sucker for the old fashioned, not, they're not old fashioned, but the original Distressed Inks. I love the Oxides too. I haven't played with them as much as I've played with these ones, but I, I do love them. So I'm drying up both sides. Now that paper in my book, if you haven't watched any of the other pages in that uh, book, it's 140 pound uh, watercolor paper. I love using that really thick paper because I use a lot of uh, wet uh, mediums. So if I start with a nice thick paper, I don't need to worry about it later. And then this video should be one of the last videos that you'll see where I'm actually upside down because I finally bought a boom arm that attaches to the wall and it brings the camera over so now they're going to be forward facing videos it was seventy dollar investment but i've wanted it for years ever since i've been doing videos i wanted this thing and i finally found it on amazon and i just went for it and i bought it my husband put it up and it's it's kind of perfect <laughs> so i had it rigged for so long my camera's on my table so anytime i move it it'll vibrate a little bit but you know, I don't, I don't do this for money. I do it just to share with people just for fun and hopefully inspire others and make people who are scared about mixed media and inking and this kind of stuff, make them not scared to try it. So I was talking through a bunch of stuff there. Again, like I said, I, I tried to record and make it real time, but it didn't work out. And there's that big old black uh, paint mark. I don't care. I'm rolling with it. It's becoming part of the deal. And it works out just fine because that tissue paper goes, it, you don't even know it's there. And who cares? I like imperfections. It works. I'm rolling with it. So I'm figuring out how I'm going to lay it on there. And I'm going to wind up cutting it a little bit. I like that placement the best. And uh, I just wind up tearing it. Again, those imperfections make it super cool, in my opinion. You won't find too many straight lines on my projects. When you do, it's intentional. And it's like a an arrangement of straight lines. But so I just tore that with a straight edge. Yeah, it's crooked. Who cares? I'll just cut it with my scissors. <laughs> these, these doing these art journals that are this size for those that are new to this, or if you're you're just watching my channel for the first time, keeping your mixed media projects when you're new to it, keeping them smaller is a great way to practice. It's a great way to not be intimidated by it. Like canvases, canvases intimidate the heck out of me. I don't know why. Is it because it's like a permanent thing? I don't know. But if you're going to do mixed media and you're, you want to really, you know, try it out and you're new to it, start with a really small canvas or a really small substrate. And um, using watercolor paper is where you should, you know, invest in that a little bit because you're going to get it wet and then you're going to wind up feeling like a failure when you make mud but you know what I make mud like everybody else I'm a professional mud maker that's all right and that's how you learn you learn what works and what doesn't and you get some gesso and when you make a mistake you gesso over and you start all over so I want a little bit more orange still kind of addicted to the orange thing I'm not sure why but there you have it and again, I, I wasn't quite sure. I haven't used the resist spray, distress resist spray yet. So I wasn't sure how much it would mute, you know, and how much that tissue, tissue paper would show through. So I wanted those background covers, colors almost obnoxious. I don't think they're obnoxious. I think they're, they fit just fine. But they needed to be really, really vibrant to show through. And that green is just magical. It's... Ugh. Hope you guys like that too. So getting the placement right, I'll have one shot at this because once you spray it, it's like a glue. You got to make sure you protect everything around you. So um, I put it in my box. Apparently I cut all of that out of this video. This has been a chore to show you, to edit for sure. So I just put it in a box, sprayed it three sprays. And put the tissue on it it was done and then I dried it with my heat tool it was so easy so perfect sorry I cut that out guys but um, it was great it was great there's all kinds of other videos on YouTube that show about um, using distress and uh, again use a splat box and be careful because if you get it on a keyboard you get it on your glass mat it's, it's gonna be permanently there unless you're willing to scrape it off for hours 
So that little piece of paper right there is some vellum. I just wanted a little piece just to add a little bit more interest to the page. And um, I knew I was going to do more stamping, but I needed something to stamp kind of on. So it is kind of a busy background, so I wanted to mute some of it. I love the colors. Um, and when you outline the outsides like I'm doing, this is ground espresso. I usually use black soot or um, vintage photo. But this was a new color and I really love it. I absolutely love it. It's nice and dark, but it's not like that. It's not like black soot. And it's not quite like vintage photo. It's that beautiful in between. But look at those colors. As soon as you outline the outside and you hit the outside of your project with a darker color, it frames it in and it makes them even brighter. Absolutely love it. So then I cover that. I put that vellum down. And I'm just going to put that down with some uh, distressed collage medium and I decided to just use my fingers I could use a brush but I just put down um, a lot of distressed ink on there I just put that ground espresso ink so if I start brushing it around too much it's gonna smear everywhere and I don't want that so I just use my finger and kind of glob it on there and slap it on there's no perfect way it's you know get messy it's okay so, and once you put the collage medium on, on the vellum, it actually makes it more translucent. So it works out really, really nice. So it adds that interest. It adds another layer without covering up all the cool stuff that you just did. Vellum is magical when you guys are doing mixed media. Use it. Use it on your um, really busy backgrounds um, with your tissue paper, just like I did here. It, it makes sense. And it adds another element. Just makes it more interesting, in my opinion. Okay, so my tools. I wind up clearing out my tools. Looks, I edited some things out of here. Some of them I didn't mean to. Some of them I should have. I want it being backwards for me. But those little butterflies are super cute. I wind up not using them, of course. But um, they're super cute. I think I'm going to use those on the next background that I do. Maybe on the next page. They're really thick. They're about, I don't know, about a eighth of an inch or, you know, thick. But um, they're super cute. I think I'm going to use them on the next page. I still have a little bit of room for some bulkiness in my book. So that is Tim Holtz Ideology Film Strip that has been in my stash, stash for a long time. I've used it many, many times. I'm finally coming to the end. I don't know if he still has this. I don't, I don't know if it's been discontinued or not, but it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things. And there's all kinds of stamps, so you could, you know, you could stamp it on tissue paper and get a similar thing, but it's actually acetate. It's really, really fantastic. I love that, and I hope it's not discontinued, but if it is, it is. We'll work around it. So, and I do the same thing with this strip. I was trying to play around with placement, and I wound up just using the um, collage medium and my finger. I'm just putting it on there and sticking it down. Super easy. I love that film strip. It's it has like a vintage photo stain on it in between each one. It's so awesome. If you guys have if you guys don't have it and you can get it, it, this is something I think you should always have in your stash. If you like the Tim Holtz grunge style and and you like that kind of stuff, it's great to have in your stash. So I just slap that down. Got to give it a minute to, to stick and dry because it is kind of rigid and then it had that, that curl to it. So, But that collage medium, Distress Collage Medium, is my new favorite. I love the consistency of it. I love it in a smaller jar. For you guys that are new to this, buy smaller jars of things. Don't get the big bulky ones. They will just dry up on you. <laughs> Don't do it. So I cut a bunch out here, clearly. So I wound up stamping... Um, Tim Holtz stamp on there. He's so cute. I love him. I filled him in and I had some um, letters that I just stuck down. It says if life was like the movies. That's kind of what that made me think of. So I hope you guys like it and you got inspired. Leave me a comment and share it if you would. And I'm going to have more to come. Thanks guys so much for all your support and all your comments. Really appreciate it.